Coming up on Mountain News at 5.30, a Richmond man is facing sex crime charges involving a young child. And President-elect Donald Trump's second pick for U.S. Attorney General was on Capitol Hill today. And we're, and we're seeing a little bit of flurry action on live pinpoint Doppler radar. Now the question is, when is it going to be out of here and when can we see a little bit of a warm up? Details in a few minutes. Dedicated to Southern and Eastern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News at 530. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. A Madison County man is facing sex crime charges involving a young child. According to the criminal complaint for Dusty Bowling of Richmond, he faces charges of rape, sodomy, abuse, and criminal abuse. The complaint says the abuse happened while the child was living with Bowling. Bowling was arrested and taken to the Madison County Detention Center. He's being held on a $100,000 cash bond. Well, we're seeing a little bit of snow out there at the 5.30 time frame, especially across the western part of the viewing area. This is the scene right now uh, at the London Corbin Airport. If you look real close, you can see a little bit of snow falling, uh, but the temperatures are still a little warm for it to uh, stick on the pavement. Temperatures outside, we're sitting in the 30s, even upper 20s, 28 in Grundy as well as Clintwood, 32 in Whitesburg, 31 in Prestonsburg. Boonville's at 32, 34 is the temperature in London, 33 is the temperature in Monticello. So there is a the snow on live pinpoint Doppler radar stretching uh, from Powell, Estill County, all the way down to portions of Whitley County as well as Bell and Harlan County. And you can see over the past several hours how it just kind of started to get its add together. So with that in mind, we'll keep the snow chance in the forecast. Now when you wake up in the morning, it will be another chilly, chilly uh, start to your Tuesday with temperatures in the upper teens and low 20s. That feels like temperature will be in the low to mid teens. Now we're going to talk about a little bit of a warm up only for it to go back down once again. Details on that and the first alert forecast in a few minutes. Steve. Eric, thank you. The first big lake effect snowstorm of the season dumped two to five feet of snowfall across parts of the country. This is what many in Buffalo, New York experienced during the weekend. Folks in Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Michigan also had to deal with some snow. Throughout the eastern part of the U.S., the Arctic chill lingers this week with temperatures running 10 to 20 degrees below normal. President Biden has changed his mind and decided that his son Hunter will not face jail time after all for federal gun and tax charges. CBS's Natalie Brand has the latest on the pardon from the White House. During a holiday event at the White House, First Lady Jill Biden briefly addressed the pardon of Hunter Biden. In a statement released Sunday night, President Biden granted his son a full and unconditional pardon, clearing him of all crimes he has committed or may have committed from January 1st, 2014 to December 1st, 2024. It comes as Hunter Biden was set to be sentenced this month and could have faced years in prison after being convicted of felony gun charges and pleading guilty to federal tax fraud. It's about as broad as, as any pardon that I am aware of. American University professor Jeffrey Crouch, an expert on presidential pardons, compared it to the pardon President Nixon received. This marks the first time a president's child has been pardoned. President Biden had previously said multiple times he would not pardon his son. You know, Biden was willing to cross the line that he wasn't willing to cross up until yesterday. Crouch also said the move could lead to more controversial pardons under the next administration. President-elect Trump called it, quote, an abuse of justice and added, does the pardon given by Joe to Hunter Biden include the January 6th hostages who have now been in prison for years? Natalie Brand, CBS News, the White House. President-elect Trump has vowed to pardon the January 6th defendants and his post makes it appear he plans to carry out that promise as soon as he is back in office. The U.S. is preparing to send Ukraine an additional $725 million in military assistance. That includes counter drone systems and munitions for an artillery rocket system. Ukraine has been pressing for more of the longer range missiles to strike additional targets inside Russia. The package also includes more anti-personnel landmines that Ukraine is counting on to slow Russian and North Korean ground forces. The Israeli military says a missing U.S. Israeli soldier was killed during the Hamas-led attack on October 7th last year. 
21-year-old Omer Maxim Nutra was previously believed to be alive and was being held hostage by Hamas. But the Israel Defense Forces announced Nutra was killed near the Near Oz Kibbutz on October 7. He was serving as a tank platoon commander at the time of the attack. The IDF says Nutra's body is being held hostage in Gaza. President-elect Donald Trump's second pick for U.S. Attorney General is on Capitol Hill today, and another one of his nominations is catching heat. CBS's Jared Hill has more on that from New York. I want to congratulate you, Ms. Bondi. A potential snapshot of the near future. President-elect Donald Trump's pick for Attorney General Pam Bondi met with incoming chair of the Senate Judiciary Committee, Chuck Grassley. Uh, your eight years and previous experience to being Attorney General of uh, Florida for eight years uh, prepares you, I'm sure, well for this job. Trump tapped the former Florida State Attorney General and staunch ally after his first choice, Former Congressman Matt Gates withdrew. Bondi will be tasked with overhauling the DOJ, which Trump says was weaponized under the current administration. Should I earn the, the trust and the, the nomination from all of the, the senators, I will do my best every day to work tirelessly for the American people. Trump is looking to put another longtime associate, Cash Patel, at the helm of the FBI. Director Christopher Wray's term doesn't end until 2027, and the president-elect's intention to replace him with someone who's promised to purge the agency is drawing scrutiny. I'd shut down the FBI Hoover building on day one. Patel has also suggested using the FBI to go after critics. Former FBI Executive Assistant Director of Intelligence, Josh School. Now, he does not have the depth of experience to lead a 37,000 person organization that is global in nature. Also, some of his statements that he has made are a little alarming. Also expected on the Hill this week, Elon Musk and Vivek Ramaswamy. They're set to meet with House Republicans to discuss cuts to federal spending, a top priority for their boss. Jared Hill, CBS News, New York. During the weekend, Trump also tapped both of his daughter's father-in-laws to official posts. Charles Kushner as ambassador to France and Masad Bolas as senior advisor on Arab and Middle Eastern affairs. The number of undocumented migrants crossing the southern border fell in November. According to a senior U.S. official, the U.S. Border Patrol arrested around 47,000 migrants along the U.S.-Mexico border last month. That is down from the more than 56,000 migrants who were arrested in October. Homeland Security officials have credited the Biden administration's executive action on immigration for the dramatic decline in recent months. Congressman Jamie Raskin is throwing his hat in the ring to be the top Democrat on the House Judiciary Committee. He is set to challenge the current ranking member, Democratic Representative Jerry Nadler, for that role. And it could become an intra-party struggle. The House Judiciary Committee is expected to play a key role in the next Congress. The committee will be chaired by Republican Jim Jordan, a close ally of President-elect Trump. Today, the Supreme Court heard arguments in a case brought by the e-cigarette industry regarding the Food and Drug Administration's rules against flavored vaping products. The e-cigarette industry believes the FDA violated federal law by changing the rules for how its products are evaluated. Dessert-flavored vaping products are under scrutiny because of their popularity with school-aged children. On Wednesday, the Supreme Court is hearing an appeal from transgender young people challenging a Tennessee ban on their medical care. The case involves fundamental principles forbidding sex discrimination. The justices will examine whether landmark decisions tracing back a half century apply to transgender rights. The case affects more than just the access young people have to puberty blockers and hormone treatments. Elton John is opening up about his struggle with vision loss. Yesterday, he spoke on stage at a gala performance of The Devil Wears Prada in London and shared he was unable to see the show. John wrote the score for the stage musical. Recently, he explained he lost his sight in his right eye in July after suffering an infection and has only limited vision in his left eye. Understandably, the 77-year-old said the issue has affected his ability to work. Coming up on Mountain News at 5.30, we hear from an expert about what prospective home buyers need to be doing to get ready if they plan on entering the housing market.
And we're seeing a few flurries push through on live pinpoint Doppler radar. We'll talk about that coming up in a few minutes. Stay with us.